I've created some of the worst products that have ever been in retail. Products that are so bad, very few people ever bought them or got a chance to use them. Except for my brother and sister who are lucky enough to get them for Christmas about every year. <laughs> but somehow I was lucky enough to go from creating the worst products to some of the best products of all time. Products that have held sales records at stores like Target and Walmart, at global shopping channels like the Home Shopping Network and QVC. Some products that even made it to number one on Amazon Prime. Once I was parodied on Saturday Night Live with one of my products, and I even was afforded my own NASCAR with one of them. But how did I go from almost no sales to over three billion in sales in 121 countries? Was it luck? Probably. Divine intervention? I believe it was. Could it have been my 125 design trips to China? That's 250 times over the North Pole. So many times my daughter was convinced I was in cahoots with Santa Claus. <laughs> this is obviously some flip phone photo about 4 a.m. with only eight and a half hours to go. I'm sure wine was involved in the making of this, of this picture. For those of you that travel internationally, I'm sure you understand the pain here. <laughs> But I, the reason I'm here is because so many people come up to me and say they have ideas. And I know that probably at some point in our lifetime, we're all gonna say, you know, why didn't I think of that? Or the more painful, I did think of that and somebody else developed it. So what I want you to take away from today is I want you to be empowered and I want you to feel confident that the next time you have an idea, you'll know what to do with it. The head of the US Patent and Trademark Office in 1889 famously stated, everything that will be invented has been invented. Think about that. This is in 1889. Everything that will be invented had been, been invented. And he said this while sitting in the dark without his iPhone. <laughs> Fortunately for all of us here, in eight million patents later, he couldn't have been more wrong. So I filed a lot of those patents, but they were all failing. And I was getting really, really frustrated and tired of failing. So I decided one day to go to the graveyard of my dead products, which is a, a rather large room in my house, bigger than I want it to be. And I thought, well, let me look at my products that have failed and see if they could talk to me and tell me what I'm doing wrong. And interestingly enough, I went and looked at major co corporations' products, billion-dollar companies that had millions and millions of dollars in marketing that have failed miserably just like I did. And what I found is that we had a lot of similarities. And then that inspired me. I thought, if I could fail with these guys in the same manner, then I'm an equal with them. I could succeed with them. And trust me, you can too. But what I want to do is show you some of the products from big companies that have failed and see if you can see the pattern. Because if the pattern turns inside out, it's actually the pattern for success. This one, I wasn't quite sure what Claire Wall was thinking. <laughs> Get to work on time by showering and eating you know, before work, whatever the case may be, this, this was a big misfire for them because what people saw was yogurt. This never made it to the shower. This went directly from the supermarket right into your fridge and was served up for breakfast. Obviously a big misfire for them and part of the pattern for failure that I'll share with you later. Then this next one left me wondering who's in charge of Burger King. I'm thinking the scary guy in that Burger King costume I tolerate my kids a lot better when I can eat their french fries. And then Burger King takes away french fries and introduced these soy wonders. These lasted about as long as it took to heat up oil for the real ones because people were turning around in the drive-thru. And trust me, nobody was satisfied with these. <laughs> then the next one hits particularly close to home for me. For the last 30 years, I've been designing and developing exercise equipment to try to make the world a better place. Then the Surgeon General announced that America is officially the most obese country in the world. So this brilliant inventor decided it was time to stop people from moving altogether. The segue. <laughs> a way to go from point A to point B by burning zero calories. Now if a picture's worth a thousand words, this is a fitness trail in Huntington, West Virginia. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that sit out there for a while, a fitness trail. Now, sadly, the inventor drove himself off a California cliff on his Segway and he died, all while burning zero calories. <laughs> a little side note, do not let your invention or your product idea kill you, or for that matter, others. 
So you wonder why products fail, and then you wonder why they're successful. So when I started to look at all the losers I had, I realized they were telling me, just turn it inside out, and you'll be able to turn your luck around and start to have products that are number one at retail instead of failing. They say when a high tide comes in, all the boats in the harbor rise. And nothing can be more true than in the pattern of success. And when I be, what I mean by that is tides, timing. Time your product right for the market. Identify who it's for before you even start making it. And design to disrupt the category. Then make it exclusive, because if people can get your idea somewhere else, they're not gonna get it from you. And then make sure they're satisfied. A good example of that is if you were an umbrella salesman, how do you think you'd be doing if it was pouring down rain? Probably pretty good. Who would you identify as your customer? Anybody wet. And is it designed to disrupt? Absolutely, it'll keep people dry. And is it exclusive? Well, if you're the only one in New York City at five o'clock and there's no cabs and it's pouring down rain and you have an umbrella stand, that's about as exclusive as you can be. And are people satisfied? The dry ones will never forget you. Then a, a more recent and current product that was timed perfectly was from Elon Musk. Elon Musk invented his car right when Al Gore invented global warming. <laughs> now whether you, hi Al, now whether you, <laughs> welcome to the talk. Whether you agree with Al or not, it was better to err on the side of green than not. So Elon identified a 40 year old executive that wanted to spend $100,000 and be green instead of driving a Hummer. And did he design to disrupt? Just ask Chevy Volt. That's what we used to think of electric cars. And how exclusive is he? Well, you can't get the Tesla anywhere else. And are people satisfied? Next time you're at a stoplight, look to your left, look to your right, and I guarantee you, you'll see one or two. And depending on what city you're in, you might see three or four. A famous advertising executive from um, Madison Avenue, David Ogilvy, famously stated, if it doesn't sell, you're not creative. And what I mean by that is no matter what you think or what I think, and what he meant by that, well, no matter what you think or what I think, you're not creative unless customers buy your product. So give yourself a chance. Be in a category that actually people want to buy from. I came up with the rule 25M times two rule. And what that is, is 25 million people need to do what you're creating or selling at least twice a week. Now, Claro had the right idea. People shampoo their hair at least twice a week, probably every day. But they just misfired with the labeling. So I had an inventor come into my office one day and he brought in scuba gear and it was the middle of February and he was from Idaho. And so, very peculiar, and I sat him down and I said, why don't we Google scuba Idaho February? There's our customer. <laughs> this is the opposite of making it rain in New York with umbrellas. Make it rain for your product. If that's your guy, you need to go back to your day job. So I convinced the inventor to let's not, let's not spend $100,000, let's not do five design trips to China, and let's just give that guy the prototype. And if he's still there in May, he might need our product. So I came out and I said I had some failures. So I might as well come clean and tell you what they are. So one, one day I decided it was time that America ate more hot dogs. And I'm a fitness inventor, so I'm not quite sure why I was doing that. Maybe subconsciously I was trying to cycle people to gain weight and then I'll make them skinny again with my products. Introducing the Hot Dog Express, the two hour hot dog cooker. Obviously at the time I did not have any children and what I didn't realize is kids will not wait two hours when they're hungry to eat. But I was not going down alone on this product. I enlisted the number one hot dog in America at the time, primetime Deion Sanders. I got my aha moment when I was in 7-Eleven right before Super Bowl. I thought, wow, this is gonna be timed perfectly. It was, and I never made it to Super Bowl. And I identified nobody that wanted it. I designed it just to disrupt my bank account. 
it wasn't exclusive because you can get rolling hot dogs at every gas station almost in America. And was anybody satisfied or satisfied, I should say? I looked over at Dion after I taught him how to cook on this thing for about four hours, and he's making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner. <laughs> so he liked, he cashed my check, but he was definitely not eating the hot dogs. So what did I do that worked? The ab doer. This was parodied on Saturday Night Live. I'm sitting at home one night, 11.30, and Dana Carvey comes out as George Bush. George is running for election. And he said, everybody's getting an ab doer. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll call the factory right now. And he said, everyone's getting an ab doer. We're gonna trim the national debt while we trim everybody's waistline. But it's not a laughing product because we sold five million units. And why? If you put the tides to the test on this one, we timed it perfectly because we identified people that could get on the ground, but they couldn't get back up. And we designed it to disrupt the space because you couldn't do a crunch in a seated position before. And we made it exclusive because we filed a patent and you couldn't get it anywhere else. And are people satisfied? Well, Johnny Abdu, my co-inventor, is very satisfied. He's, and his name's Johnny Abdu. When he came in, I said, hey, I have an Abduer waiting for you here in the back office. So we're still selling product. He's still happy. His tide is still rising, trust me on that. So no matter who you are, whether you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company or you're a home inventor, sorry about that, home inventor like me who has an idea, put the tides to the test. Anybody can do this. Make sure that you time your product correctly and follow the program and make sure 25 million people want what you're doing because only 1% of the population is gonna to respond to your idea. So give yourself a chance. I guarantee you if you do, that your fortunes will rise. As an entrepreneur, your stature will rise. More importantly, your bank will rise when you enter the room. And a high tide really does rise all the boats in the harbor. And you may even end up on Saturday Night Live. Thanks.